Hey everybody, welcome back to Rain and Pause. Uh, today I'm doing another set of my Chameleon Coasters. I've got three more colours to make sets of, so join me as I pull those. Let's go down to the tiles and let's start. So here I've got my setup. So this is generally how I work. I've got all my uh, paints mixed here. I've got some untinted paint if I need to extend it. I've got more white to add to my cell activator if I need to. Uh, with these ones, because I'm working on a black base, I'm actually not going to use my white cell activator. I've just had this open from a previous set of pores. I'm just going to close that up and put that aside. And I'll get my black cell activator in order. Always best to have all your colors and everything in order when you're working so you know how you're going to apply them and everything's within easy reach. Back. So I've got my Josonia and water mixture there to thin down my paints if need to and I keep all my put all my tiles when they're finished over here on the side. I've got my black pillow which is the Tormund's exterior black and let's go down for a detailed shot of the tile. So here we go nice and centered and I'm going to use up some black pillow paint that I was just using and it does have a bit of pouring medium mixed into it. It's got some cell activator mixed into it but it's perfectly fine to use for blooms. Now I'll blow these out with my mini blower so my head doesn't get in the way. And the first color I'll be working with is called Golden Hour. And this color is amazing. It's a red to orange color shift. Let me move this out of the way first. So it's a deep red to orange to green color shifting pigment. Second color I'll be using is Woodstock. This one's a little bit more of a subtle color shift, but it goes from green to blue. Not as noticeable, but still very pretty. And this one is called Stardust. And this is a purple green color shift, like a deep, I don't know, maroon color almost. It's just amazing. So hopefully you'll get to see those colors on the tile. So let's start spinning. So I've just put down my pillow and I'm going to thin out golden hour first and work just with that first. That's perfect consistency for a bloom. And because of the way that chameleon pigments act, each particle is coated with more than one uh, particle of titanium dioxide. So each particle of paint actually throws off every color. It's not just a whole heap of colors mixed together. So you can get amazing results with a tiny, tiny amount of paint. Like that's nowhere near enough paint that I would normally put on these tiles. But because of the way that the chameleon pigments act, I can get away with it. So now I'll blow it out with the mini blower. there you can see already from j just from that angle that color shift if I tilt it it goes orange if I tilt it this way it goes a little bit pink if I tilt it more that way it goes through pink to red hopefully my camera's focused on it everything's black okay so let's spin it get rid of the excess now, because I'm, I'm using leftover pillow paint, I'm not wasting any paint here. So I'm not putting down more fresh black paint. I'm just using whatever goes into my mixing cup. It's a great way to save paint if you're conscious of that. Especially with black. With white, if I'm working with whites, I try and keep all of the colors that are similar in the white paint in the same waste container. So if I'm working with reds on a white background, naturally they'll uh, brighten down to be a pink color. So I will keep all of my pink pillow paint in a separate container to the ones that I'm working on that have blue in them. Otherwise you'll just end up with a really sort of middle of the road gray. And then we've got our first color shifting pigment and this is golden hour and it really is a good representation of golden hour with all those colors that a sunset would go through okay back into the 
jar and then I'm just going to give it a little stir before we go for our next one. And I'm going to do these in sets of four. That tends to be my best uh, selling point is sets of four coasters. A lot of people are happy with those. I do offer sixes and I do take custom orders for more, but a lot of people are generally happy with four. I'm not going to blow that one out anymore. I'm just going to go in with my little tool and blow out the center. Of course, there's paint on the end of my blowout tool. I'm just encouraging the cells to develop. I'm not blowing it out completely again. Just encouraging those middle cells to develop. If your consistency is a little bit off, it'll be a lot harder for that to happen because your base paint will be a little bit too thin. And that's what's happened because I've mixed uh, lots of pouring medium and other things into this. Uh, the pillow may be a little bit thin, so the initial blowout may not be as effective. Just shifting the weight of some of that paint before I spin it out. Got lots of lovely tiny little cells, which I love. A lot of people like really big stretched open cells. I'm not opposed to those if I get them, but I really like these tiny little ones that appear around the sides here. And they're always the ones that get spun off the canvas first. It's beautiful. Got to admit, I'm so uh, protective of my color shift pigments that I don't use them because they are so expensive and I don't have a lot of them but there's no point in letting them just sit there and not get used they're bought for a reason they're there to be used so yes you want to be frugal with what you've got but it's at the end of the day you bought it for a reason you bought it to be used so use it okay I'm going to wipe the rim of the cup so that anything I pour out doesn't have any dried up bits in it. Um, I don't get any lumps. And that's where they all collect. And this time I'm just going to try spinning it out a little bit first to flatten out that pillow and to see if that helps to hold the pigment up. And again, you really don't need much of these because they will stretch across the whole surface and because of the way that they are made, they will cover everything. They've got full coverage on them. to get everything spread out and the thing I love about making these is even if you do blow up a little bit of pillow paint it just adds to the effect because that's an area of focus where there isn't a color shift pigment so for example here uh, when I blew that part out I missed the pigment entirely but that adds a bit of interest to the coaster you know if the whole th yes while the whole thing covered in cells is absolutely great little bits of interest like that are even better. Just checking to see that my center isn't moving. And this one's ready. Again, these are my favorite, favorite pigments to work with. And I promised Emma, so Emma is my friend who lives over in Michigan. Hi Emma. Um, big shout out to her. She sent me these uh, pigments and she has she makes her own watercolors and her 
Etsy page is Dreamland Watercolor, uh, Dreamland Calligraphy. And she's also on Instagram. Check out some of her stuff. And if you're interested in watercolor painting, you can uh, buy some of her paints that she makes herself with these pigments and yeah, give them a go. So she makes limited edition colors. So you can't actually buy these ones anymore, but she always has fresh, new, exciting colors. And hopefully I'm getting some more of those for myself to give watercolors a go. So this will be coaster number four. I don't know if I stuffed up the blow on that one, but I think I've blown up pillow paint everywhere because I can't see much color shifting going on, but we shall see. Definitely blew up pillow paint all over the place. But it gives it a look of interest. This camera angle is actually really great for seeing how these pigments work. Now again, there is a big blob of cell activator there, but that's absolutely fine. As this sits, that will level itself out and hopefully reveal some of the cells underneath. Beautiful. Okay, so that one was Golden Hour. Now we'll move on to Woodstock. So Woodstock, out of the six pigments that I have, was actually my least favorite. Um, don't know why I wasn't a fan of it. I think it just doesn't have as much of a color shift as the other pigments do. Um, but I thought it would be because it's a green to blue color shift. So I'm just going to thin this down a little bit. It's also uh, ground a little bit coarser than the other colors. So you can see a noticeable sparkle in this, almost like a glitter whereas the other colors don't have that. And I'm not sure if that adds to the effect or detracts from the effect. Um, I've only made one coaster, one single coaster testing this out. And I've used it in a couple of uh, pieces in with other colors, but you tend to lose it. So having this by itself is go hopefully going to give me a better appreciation of the actual color and the color shift it offers. Okay. No idea what's going on with this one. Just a really bad blowout, I think. Okay, now that this is by itself on a black background, I can really see the blue to green color shift happening here. So there it's more teal, turquoise, and there it's more green. So definitely blue on that angle and green on this angle. I believe there's also some yellow in there from memory. If you hit it at certain angles, it almost looks yellowy. Now, another little question I wanted to sort of answer today is a question that I've proposed myself. And it is, if you mix chameleon powders if you mix chameleon pigments, what sort of color shift does it offer? Would it offer all of the colors in that spectrum? So once I've done this coaster, I'm actually going to give that a try. There we go, there's a bit of the yellow, the blue and the green. Lovely.
So let's see, I'm just going to get a small container. I'm going to take a little bit of wood stock and I'm going to take a little bit of stardust. I'm going to mix those two together. So there we've got stardust and wood stock. Now let's give them a stir. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this is the result. Don't mix chameleon pigments together. That's not how they work. They don't make a new colour if you do that. What happens is you're just trying to smash all of these colours together in the one thing and you're going to get a yucky, slightly colour shifty brown mess. So that's a question that I've answered for myself. I'll use that somewhere. But for now, let's stick with the colours that we have mixed up. So we'll keep going with Woodstock. And it's thickened up quite a fair bit just in the last minute. So always checking consistency, always making sure that they are correct for your pillow. So if your pillow is a little bit thicker, you can get away with having colours a little bit thicker. Now this one I'm going to blow out with my mouth and see if we can get a different cell pattern or structure happening. To me, mouth blown pieces always have more cells, more concentrated cells, smaller cells, and for me they just always look better. I like using the little blower for videos because you can see what I'm doing, how I'm blowing the paints around, and it's great to illustrate what I'm doing with my mouth with the little blower. So you'll see me scooping out petals one way or another and doing a circle at the beginning. That's what I'm doing with my mouth when you mouth blow them. So if you're struggling with the bloom technique and trying to get everything correct, uh, I do have a video called uh, The Blow Technique, which is in the playlists uh, on this channel. And I show you close-ups and side views of what my mouth is doing when I'm blowing these paints out. Just making sure I've got enough off. And look at that, beautiful. Love that green colour shift. Whenever I see these goldy based ones uh, sitting on the, the board on the side, all I ever see is orange. And then you move closer to them and you just get this whole range of colours in that spectrum. And they're just amazing. I just had my mum in here actually. And she was watching me mix these colours up and she was in awe of how pretty they are. And honestly, the camera doesn't do them justice. When you see them in person, they take your breath away. mini blower again. I'm actually going to try something with the mini blower. They come with nozzles and I don't ever use the nozzles uh, because I feel more comfortable with them without it. But I'm going to attach it and see if I can get a more refined result. This one looks really interesting. This colour combination and the cell pattern on this one is giving me a really out of space vibe. 
I don't know, almost like cosmic goo splattered on a window or something. I like it. Okay, so that one was a bad blowout and I've got some really thick cells and veiny lacing. But, absolutely fine. I think it works. Not every piece can be perfect. And this will be the last one for Woodstock. Okay, maybe a little bit more paint. And again, the paint has thickened right up. This one thickens up super quickly for some reason. And I do find that with pigments. Certain colours thicken up incredibly fast. And I wonder if it's just something in their chemical makeup that causes a reaction with the products we use. Um, and it just thickens them. It's really strange. Okay, so definitely very different using the nozzle because it is such a concentrated stream of air. Uh, you really have to move it side to side so that you blow everything out evenly. If you just concentrate it in one spot, you get really long, thin, elongated petals. They don't look bad, but it's just a different look to your blooms. And that's handy to know that you can alter the shape of your petals by changing the shape of your air stream. And that's either with your mouth or with the blower, whatever tool you're using. If you're doing a bigger one, you can do that with your hairdryer. Using a uh, smaller nozzle will give you a shorter, thinner stream of air and will give you elongated petals. Sort of like imagine a, a chef's blowtorch. If you turn the flame right down, you get a really short flame. If you turn it right up, you get a really long, elongated one. So the more power you give it, the higher your flame is going to be. And similar to this, the more power you give behind the blow, the longer your petals are going to be. And this one is finished. So that there was Woodstock. And the last color I have here is Stardust. I'm just going to put my coasters aside to dry. Got more tiles. So I'm going to do eight more coasters today. So four with Stardust. And then I want to use two chameleon pigments, place them side by side and see what we could create. Okay, this is thinned out. Okay, so this one is the Chameleon Pigment Stardust, it's called. Emma always comes up with the most creative names for her products and I love all of them. So let's try this one without the nozzle. Another little trick you can do is on your world's smallest blower, there's a little air intake vent. If you put your finger over this, you will stop the flow of air coming in and decrease the amount of air coming out. The other thing you can do is on the other side, there is also a vent. You can cover those up. So your blower will work harder, but it won't put out much air. So here you can see that amazing orange to pink color shift. And there it is fully pink. There it is orange. And if you go further, 
which I'm too scared to do because the tire will slip off, you'll get green as well. is not shifting so that's a great sign there you go there you can see that green gold pink and this is only one pigment guys this is the power of chameleon pigments love them now this one isn't as vibrant a color as some of the other pigments that I've got but still amazing When I say vibrant, the colors just don't stand out as much once they're applied. I'm almost running out of wasted paint here, which is great. And the last couple I may just need to use fresh paint, but I saved so much from being thrown out by using it as a pillow and it will behave perfectly fine as a pillow. So I'm gonna mouth blow this one Gorgeous cells, I love them. They make me so happy. good so from the angle that I'm looking at them they just look black but when I look up on the camera they look pink when I put them down on the table they look green just blows my mind okay now I have to use regular pillow this is just plain black Torbmans now I have to be careful with this because it's a little bit runnier so because I've been adding uh, in the pouring medium, that varnish has been thickening up while it's been sitting in the cup, but this is plain black paint now, so it will be a little bit thinner. So I'm going to use the mini blower, but I'm going to be very cautious doing it so that I don't blow up any pillow paint. I think I failed in doing that because I've brought up a lot of pillow paint here. Sometimes it's really hard to tell if it's cell activator or pillow when you're using the same color, especially black because it is so deep. See, that is cell activator in the middle, so okay. That's puffed out, let's spin it, see what happens. Still amazing. And 
dealing with that wastage. I've got enough left in my cup to use as pillow. Tiny bit more on this one. There we go. And this will be the last one for Stardust. And I might mouth blow this one just to see. pattern there. Spin, spin, spin. And that's all for Stardust. Oh no! This idiot just put a finger right into the paint. So I'm going to try and save it and see if I can spin the design if there's any paint left on this at all to that direction. So I've got to be really careful but I'm going to try and move this fingerprint off, off the side of the tile. It nearly slipped out of my hand as I was putting it down and it's really unfortunate. But it's always the last one, isn't it? Nearly there. One more. The other thing you've got to be really careful of if you've got your tile off centered like I have, that it does not go flying off the edge of your spinner. Okay. And that looks uh, enough that it's not noticeable. Okay, much more careful putting it down now. All right, now for the final four tiles that I'm doing today, let's use two chameleon pigments. So I'm going to use Woodstock and what's the other one? Northern Lights. Let's give that a go. So let's put some Northern Lights on the bottom, some Woodstock on top. And just around in general and blow this out. I'm going to layer them on the next one because I've lost a lot of the wood stock. I'm almost considering scraping this one because I lost so much of it, but I may leave it. I'll pour the other ones and I will see what my final decision is going to be. Okay. 
golden hour down and then the woodstock on top what I should do is put them next to each other see what effect that gives us So I think what's happening is a similar effect to what happens if you mix them together. And I'm getting like a lot of brown from the angle that I'm seeing it. From the camera, I can see the different colors. I can see the orange and I can see the green. So it looks very woodlands in the camera. I don't know why orange and green looks like woodlands. I think it's like autumn leaves. There's a little bit of color change going on there. Okay, there you can really see the green and pink. And here you can really see the orange and teal. So that's really fun. For the next one, I'm going to put them side by side. puddle of golden hour here and a little puddle of woodstock here So again, you get the orange and blue this side and you get the pink and green on this side. So I think that's actually a really cool combination of colors there. Very cool. And our last one for the day. Let's do another layered one. This time I'm going to throw in a little bit of the Stardust. Throw that in on the bottom layer.
Okay, beautiful orange and teal there. Watermelon right there, green and pink. And I'm going to, so, just to show how little paint you actually waste if you save the pillow and reuse the pillow, uh, you can't really see, but this is all I've got in there. And that's maybe this much, this much in the base of the cup. So I would say maybe two ounces at most, two ounces of wasted paint to make 16 tiles is pretty damn good. Actually, I lie, I made 24 tiles and I've only got two ounces of wasted paint. So working with a black background is great if you want to do anything cost effective and you can just mix anything straight into this. You do want to be careful though that you don't uh, extend this too much because your entire black paint will become sparkly. I don't know if you can see it in there, but all of those pigments tend to uh, taint the color of the paint. So I hope you enjoy uh, looking at these chameleon pigments as much as I do. They're one of my favorite things to make. They're one of my favorite things to have and they sell really quickly as well. So if you do sell your art and you're looking for something to bolster and uh, increase your sales, try and get some chameleon pigments. Um, anything shiny people are drawn to like birds. So <laughs> I know I am. So when I saw these, I was like, I must have them. And now that I'm creating things with them, um, they just make me really happy to create. I love watching them shift in the light. Um, I take them outside to do my photography and I'm really happy with them. So yeah, if you love the chameleon pigments as much as I do, stick around. I'll be sure to be creating a lot more work with them. And I hope to see you in the next video, guys. Bye.